So now to our interview with the guest of the day. I am joined by the South South Chairman and Spokesman for the National Forum of APC LGA Chairman, Norbert Sochukudima, for discussion on the battle for the Senate Presidency in the 10th National Assembly. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, sir. I'm glad to be here. Good evening All right. to us. Good evening to you. Now, uh, the race to the leadership of the 10th National Assembly is getting hotter. Let me have your view about this. Yeah, it, it is expected. What is happening now is expected. The general elections have come and gone. And what it is now is to talk about governance. And uh, choosing the leadership of the National Assembly is part of what governance will bring. And uh, if you check what is happening in the nation, uh, we have six major geopolitical zones. And in these six zones, two zones are already taken care of by the virtue of having the president elect from the southwest and the vice president elect from the northeast. The four remaining zones and uh, uh, those who have been successful in the election, victorious in the elections, will be making frantic effort to occupy one of these uh, top positions to support the government. So it's expected. It's expected. But from what we've seen so far, uh, there are so many zones uh, laying claims to the leadership of both chambers. Do you think it's too early uh, when the APC is yet to zone the positions? Yeah, I, I do not think it's too early. Uh, if you see what is happening now, everybody is uh, making effort. Every zone, the remaining four zones desire to have one of the four top positions. Despite that, they are all relying also that the National Working Committee, National Leadership of the ruling party, the APC, which has majority of the elected National Assembly members, will zone, and they are ready also to follow the zoning. But the uh, interest that they are expressing, the agitation, the claims that different zones are laying to this will go a long way to impact on what decision the uh, ruling or progressive Congress will take uh, with regard to the zoning. So what is happening is normal. They also are doing it, but no matter how much anybody talks about any uh, zone that they want any position to go to, they won't zone until the leadership of the All Progressive Congress does so. All right. If you say the lobbying is not too early, juxtaposing this with the fact that the APC leadership is yet to zone the positions, will this not cause uh, acrimony for those who are already vying for the post later? Uh, not, not necessarily. Uh, the lobbying, as I said earlier, the no lobbying will help the national leadership of the party in making their zoning. If uh, contestants, contenders don't show interest, a lot of things will go wrong at the end of the day. But what is happening now, as they are showing interest, it will help the leadership of the party to decide where the zone as what you're saying that is early by the special grace of god after the inauguration of uh, the president elect and uh, the vice president elect may 29 at early june by the grace of god the national assembly will be inaugurated and this leadership will take place so it's not far at all what they are doing is not too early it's the right time the proper time to do it all right, so Pastor Norbert, for the purpose of clarity, how will this help uh, the leadership of the party uh, make a stance? Oh, beautiful. I will take uh, from the forum, the forum that I, I represent and I speak for. It will, I know you are aware that I'm not here in my personal capacity. I'm here speaking and representing the National Forum of Local Government APC chairman, the party chairman across the nation. Uh, what we are doing now, we had our uh, press uh, conference on the 27th of April, where we seized the opportunity to congratulate 
our leader. Uh, that press conference was read out by the national chairman and coordinator of our forum, Honorable Matthew Horn. He read it where we congratulated our president-elect, the vice, and all APC candidates, those who ran for governorship, the Senate, House of Rep, and State House of Assembly. We congratulated them. And from there, we issued a statement, press statement, where we expressed ourselves to lend our voice. So what is happening now is to allow different uh, support groups within and outside APC to lend their voices towards the decision that will be finally taken by the leadership of the party. And in that press statement, we took a position as a forum, making passionate appeal, asking the national leadership of our party, uh, the president-elect, the vice president-elect, the critical stakeholders, even the progressive governors' forums. We made passionate appeal to them that these uh, four positions, the Senate President, the Deputy Senate President, the Speaker of the House of Reps, and the Deputy Speaker of the House of Reps should be zoned to the remaining four uh, political zones for equity, inclusiveness, for fairness, for unity. And uh, in that interview also, we made it clear the area we desire for so many obvious reasons. Uh, that this position should be zoned to. For instance, we, are, we made that appeal and I'm seizing this opportunity on behalf of our great forum to appeal passionately again to our leaders that in doing this zoning, Southeast should be considered for the Senate presidency. The Senate president should be zoned to the Southeast. We are begging, we are appealing, we are not forcing them. But we know they will listen to our voice. Then, in that also press release, we talked about the, the deputy senate president to be zoned to the north central, the speaker to the uh, uh, northwest, and the deputy speaker to the south south, so that all the six geopolitical zones will be taken care of. So this kind of uh, uh, statement that we made, and we are following up through our leaders in the various uh, local government and states and senatorial district will help the leadership of our party in taking their decision when the time comes. All right, so these are some of the talking points that have shaped uh, the conversation or the choice of uh, the Senate presidency. So we're going to be looking at them one after the other. The Southeast Zone is laying claim to the Senate presidency to balance the power equation. How feasible is this with what is on ground? Uh, how do you mean what is on ground? On ground. Uh, there are a lot of indications, various interests playing out already. Okay, okay. Uh, politics is dynamic. The, all you see are just intrigues. At, at, the, at the end of the day, the... the major place will take that right position. But it's feasible, quite feasible. As, as a matter of fact, the Southeast stands the best chance of taking that position of Senate presidency. The reason is this. We, as I, as I proceeded earlier, the, the Senate the president-elect is from Southwest. The vice president-elect is from Northeast. We now have the southeast, the south, south, north, central, and north, west. Uh, north, central, for instance, as of today, by the, uh, has the national chairman of our party. The northwest, as of as today, also helped us during the election, and they, uh, they have the current president. The south, south, has also my own leader, able leader, capacity leader who led us through our election to deliver massively for our president, the current deputy Senate president, Senator Ovier Omo uh, Agege. Then if you talk about uh, Southeast currently, and for quite a period of time, there's uh, not much of what you can hold on that they have. So for unity, for equity, for peace, for inclusiveness, that these 
people who are Nigerians, pure Nigerians from that zone, will have a sense of belonging. They stand the bare chance of getting it. And uh, my confidence, again, is in the kind of president-elect and the vice-president-elect we have, and in the kind of leadership of the all-progressive that we have. These are leaders who are sensitive to the yearnings of the people. We've lent our voice and we are going to continue to talk about it. That what we need to do, what our incoming president needs to do with his team to succeed is to bring wrong government of inclusion, government of inclusiveness, government of unity. It will give us peace. Some level of agitation, misgivings in the southeast will die down. Anybody who is looking elsewhere, it, let me say this, politically and otherwise, will have different kinds of interest. There is, uh, uh, there is selfish interest. There is personal interest. There is collective interest. There is national interest. And there is selfless interest. Whosoever wishes well for Nigeria, whosoever desires that Nigeria will unite and remain united, remain peaceful and progressive, will be more interested in the national interest. What will give us national unity? And what will give us that national unity in this coming administration? It's simply, very simple, zoning the Senate president to the southeast. Let those, our wonderful brothers and sisters, have this feeling, have this sense of belonging. If I were a selfish uh, politician, I'll be talking about South-South, because that's where I'm from. But because we are not uh, uh, interested in personal interests, at the meeting of our forum, our national forum, where this decision was taken, we judged the matter, talked about it, analyzed everything. Uh, I would have made so much case with God's given voice for my zone, but because I am more interested in the unity, in the peace, in the progress, in the inclusiveness of every Nigerian, we all settled that this should go for to, to the southeast. And this message we are passing to our leaders, begging and appealing to them that they do this and will have the desired Nigeria, greater Nigeria that are of renewed hope that Senator Bola Ahmed Tinobu is bringing to us. So, Pastor Norbert, I, I mean, the South-South is also vying for the position of the next Senate president. Do you agree it should be zoned there? Basically because... Uh, for reward based on the outcome of the presidential election. Uh, okay. Uh, talking about that, yes. I, I said earlier, all the four zones, especially the two zones from the south, the southeast and south-south, reserve the right to want to desire or claim that. But putting these uh, uh, issues on ground, you now know where it will give us national a cohesion, national unity, national peace and progress more. I am from the South-South by the special grace of God and uh, we, the feeling we have is different from the feeling that the South-Easterners have. The feeling we have from the South-South is that we, by the grace of God we have produced a president of this country for about, about uh, six years and we also had produced a vice president for the short period of time, currently we'll have Deputy Senate President. If you see what uh, played out during the presidential election, is this feeling I'm talking about, this agitation. The Southeasterners, uh, since 1999, have not had the opportunity of coming close to clinching the power of the President of this country. So when uh, 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 Peter Obi came up, almost all the uh, South Eastern people embrace it. I have listened to a conversation where some are saying that the Southeasterners didn't give OPC the needed vote. So for that reason, they should not be given Senate presidency. I totally, with all sense of res responsibility, disagree with that notion. If you listened uh, to the governor of Anambra State, Governor Chuku Masoludo, there was a time he made a press statement. People make, made mockery of it. Some people accused him. Some people abused him. But you know what he said in that statement? He said that 
if he were a Bolatinubu, he would have given Peter Obi money. Because what Peter Obi was doing in that election was just like he was working for uh, uh, Bola Ahmed. Let me tell you, technically, strategically, the Southeast votes that they gave to Peter Obi helped our victory as a party. The way he helped it is that if uh, Peter Obi had not run uh, under another party against Atiku and the Southeasterners followed them, uh, followed him, followed his party and delivered those votes. Those, most of those votes may have gone to uh, Atiku and it would have been very difficult for us to get the result. So one way or the other, the Southeasterners contributed immensely to our victory. That is on one side. On another side, the, the votes we got, you see, for anybody to have campaigned for APC in the Southeast in this past election, after 24 years that they have not had opportunity, and there is a Southeasterner that uh, was running in that uh, election also, it was a, a, a very difficult thing. So I praise all of them, all the APC people in the Southeast who worked hard, worked assiduously to give us the In Imo State, we got over 60 or 66,000 in a bunny about 40 something thousand votes. These people were not ghosts. They are people, they did that because they believe in APC. They believe in Bola Ahmed Tinubu. They believe in Kashin Shetima. They believe in the entire leadership of APC. That was why against all odds, against the popular desire of an average Southeasterner, this party faith falls put up their party, fought for us, and give us victory. Can we now say, because majority of the Southeasterners failed or did not vote for our party, that we should punish those who uh, brought out their time, risked their life, and gave us vote? It will be unfair if anybody does that. Besides, elections have come and gone. The president-elect is not going to be the president of APC. He's the president of Nigeria. The vice president-elect is the vice president of Nigeria. Then the Senate president we are talking about is not going to be a Senate president of APC. He's going to be a president of Nigeria Senate. Whether anybody voted for you or not is immaterial. What is important is that we have a united nation. We have a, a nation, a country, where everybody will have sense of belonging. We feel that I am part of this nation. I need to contribute my quota. That is what is important. And I am very happy and confident when I speak in this matter because I know Bola Ahmed, you know, the president-elect, he is not going to witch hunt or punish anybody. He will do everything to carry... I listened to uh, his, estate, his statement at uh, uh, River State today when he went there to commission some project. He said, I will not marginalize any region. Southeast has, uh, feels, Southeast feels marginalized for a long period of time. Giving them this senior president, which I know, by the grace of God, our leaders will tell to us, will make them have sense of belonging and they will no longer feel marginalized. So my, my dear people from the South-South, if, if I were left alone, maybe I would have said, okay, let this go to the South-South. But that would be personal interest. That would be selfish interest. Pastor and Robert, besides, okay. what I am advocating, Okay, so please it, allow it, me to uh, drive this point home. All right. Yeah, what I'm, I'm advocating here is not just for me as an individual. This is a decision of the forum of APC party local government chairman across the nation. The leadership of this forum met and agreed on these positions that I am articulating. All right, so based on this point, uh, is it fair to say that uh, the race may just be between the South-South and the Southeast? Because some political analysts have urged senators from the Northwest vying for the Senate presidency to drop their ambition in the interest of fairness and equity. Is this enough reason for them to step down? <laughs> Absolutely. Any realistic uh, person realistic politician, politician that is not selfish and over 
from the north will not be running for student presidency. This race of student presidency from the look of things is just between the southeast and the south-south. And uh, we as a forum believe that southeast is better positioned. It will pay us better as a nation if it is taken to southeast. So absolutely is between the southeast and south-south. But the southeast has more uh, advantage as it, as it were. Yeah, but most of them, uh, like, uh, like uh, Yari Marao, are still in the race. Why do you think they are yet to drop their ambition? Yeah, there is no law anywhere that uh, uh, forbids them from running. Anybody can run. But what happens at the end of the day? You see, during our build-up to the general elections, the progressive governor forums met and resolved that... Since our current president, President Muhammad Buhari, will be rounding off, that power must shift to the south. In that primary of APC, some persons in, in APC from the north also uh, contested for the primaries. But what happened? The decision of the majority, the leaders, the critical stockard of the party prevailed. If you check uh, the result of that primaries, the first position, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, from the south, the second position, Rotimi Amechi, from the south. The third position, Professor Shibanjo, from the south. So these senators from the north reserve the right to run, but their running may, will not make any impact. That is my candid opinion. It's not make any difference. The Senate president, uh, president uh, as a matter of fact, we hope and believe that the leadership of APC will zone. And they are zoning, this I say with uh, all confidence, will not go beyond southeast and south side, but most likely it's going to southeast, hopefully. All right, so let's take a look at the Green Chamber, uh, where the northwest, northeast, and north central zones are laying claims to the Speaker of House of Representatives. So, which of these zones do you think should be considered? <laughs> yes, from our forum, we also considered it also. In our forum, after we pinned down southeast, for Senate President, our humble suggestion is that uh, the Deputy Senate President should go to the North Central and North West should produce the Speaker. Then the South South will have the Deputy Speaker. This was what exactly the content of our pre statement. That is what we are advocating, that is what we are praying. But one thing is sure whether some of the things change or not, since uh, the Senate president will come from the south. It is uh, almost uh, sure that the speaker will come from the north, either north central or northwest, because northeast already has the vice president. So however it goes, southeast Senate president, south-south deputy speaker, uh, northwest speaker, north central uh, deputy Senate president. This is what the leadership of our forum uh, are advocating. This is what we, are, what we are conversing, appealing, begging our leaders to consider this. And again, in uh, uh, making all this, we didn't just do it without also taking into cognizance, do we have leaders in these areas who will be capable of delivering the needed peace the needed unity, the needed leadership, the needed synergy that we have. Yes, in the four zones that we are begging that these positions should be taken to, we have leaders in mind. And those leaders also, their names were mentioned in our press statement. For instance, the Southeast, we, we have three, uh, we have two ranking senators. So I'd like to talk about the two ranking senators in the Southeast. Senator, uh, most distinguished Senator Osita Izunaso and uh, Senator Ojo Zokalo. We as a forum, we, the forum, national forum of APC local government chairman, settled and endorsed most distinguished Senator uh, Osita Izunaso. And we have our reasons. It has sterling leadership qualities. Number one of those qualities is accessibility. Number two is competence. Number three is experience. 
He was in House of Rep uh, till 2003 and uh, went to Senate from 2003 to 2007 before he came worked for the party as National Organizing Secretary of our dear party before he came. He has experience. He's a first class material and he's a loyal party man. He's not over ambitious. You see, what happened in the 8th National Assembly? I pray our party, the leadership of our party, will not allow it to repeat itself. Where uh, the APC Senate, Senator elects were having meeting with the national leadership on whom to deliver. Uh, uh, Senator Bukola Saraki collaborated with the PDP and they emerged as the Senate president Ekweremadu emerged from the PDP. You have a Senate president from the ruling party and uh, a deputy Senate president from it was because the party at that point, at that moment, didn't do what we are begging and asking that they should do now. And the, the, if you allow somebody who is as ambitious as that to become the Senate president, Senator Bola uh, Ahmed Tinubu will not enjoy his leadership like the way uh, uh, Muhammad Ubuaro suffered in the hands of the eight as the leadership of the eighth assembly. There was no synergy, there was no cooperation. So, but Osita Izunaso, we provide to Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu the needed cooperation, the needed synergy, because he's cool headed, he, he has he has listening ears, he pays attention to the damn truding, to the people. And that is the kind of leader we have. Never again would we allow someone who only sees his fellow big men, who only sees those because he wants something from them, who is not interested in caring of what the people at the grassroots level need. We are advocating this because we are grassroots leaders. We are grassroots mobilizers. We are closer to most of these people in the grassroots than these big leaders. Osita Izunaso has proven beyond any reasonable doubt that he can lead the Nigeria. And remember, the Mr. senior Nobles. president is the chairman of the National Mr. Assembly. Uh, so someone who will occupy that position. Uh, very interesting conversation, but we will have to take a break now. I will be right back.